I'm gonna be honest with you peeps, I have no idea how to do this video. I've been doing two-dimensional art on this channel, so I wanted to venture into Sculpey Clay. So when I put Sculpey Clay on the schedule, I was not really going in with much of a plan. I just thought, I'm just gonna do Sculpey Clay, it'll be great, yeah. Now I'm here. Instead of creating a whole new project, I am revisiting an old one. However, this current project is a little questionable in my skill level. So we're gonna do a lot of troubleshooting in this video, but I will share with you what I do know about sculpture and three-dimensional stuff. So let's get into it. Okay, so today is day 17 of my Tubetober challenge where I'm posting one video a day for the month of October. This is probably not the smartest idea to do for a video that I only have one day to film and produce and everything. I probably should have saved it for later, but we're here. So if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications to see all of those new videos. I have a creature design that I started on a while ago. So this is inspired from a book that I am hoping to someday write with my best friend. And it's a sci-fi fantasy. So this creature is completely not related to anything realistic except for I'm trying to blend like kind of a dog, cat, raccoon idea. Let me show you some of the sketches that I have. These were just some of the initial sketch ideas that I had come up with and those weren't really quite what I was looking for so I did eventually flush out closer. I'm not a hundred percent on this one either. I think this is probably the best representation. Then I started this probably a couple of years ago already so I've already gone with Sculpey Clay and sculpted the face but as you can probably tell the body is not in proportion to the head so we need to do a little bit of doctoring. I tabled this project because I was not a fan of it, but we're here now. Um, I had initially decided that I wasn't going to do polymer clay feet, but I think I'm going to now. And also the newer design now has wings. I don't know why I did that, but we're gonna add some wings. <laughs> Cause I think I always pictured this creature as being a little flying creature anyways. We need to make some anatomy choices before we move on. Kind of looks more like a bulldog. <laughs> like a bulldog with a long neck and that's definitely not what I was going for. <sighs> as much as I have like worked and reworked this, we're just gonna strip the whole body off and go right from the skeleton. I just spent 20 minutes getting the the pelt off of it. So as you can see, I have, there's a lot, there's a lot. So the lesson to learn from this is less is more. So I'm gonna take that off and then I'm going to do some comparison with my sketch to see kind of where I'm sitting with the anatomy. Okay, so as I look at this, I don't think it's too terribly awful. I can still tell that in here, I have probably too much back, back line, but I'm thinking I can twist this up a little bit to actually make a connector in for the wings and take out some length there. And then I'm also feeling like this area right here is way too long. But something else that I noticed is that this is actually slipping around a little bit. So I'm going to try and actually wrap, do a wrap with each of the legs around either side of this to secure this in a little better. So hopefully that won't move anymore. I was actually surprised because I thought the neck was going to feel a lot different. And even like these front legs. Now I think I'm gonna have to secure this because I think these were meant to stay bent as the shoulder line. And I think going back, I would not have made a bent in shoulder line, so I'll have to secure this somehow so that I keep that length. Otherwise, I'm gonna have his elbows way too far. So let's, uh, let's do a little bit of tweaking here and add in some wings.
so I have officially come to the reason why I tabled this project like two years ago and that's the feet. I don't know what I want to do. So I've been looking on YouTube and I can't find anything that remotely even want, like looks like what I want to do. So I think I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and wing it a little bit. So I've pulled up some dog paw anatomy stuff because I, I don't want to just do the foot all in one like rigid thing. I kind of want the foot to be poseable, but I don't know if it's possible with something this small. We'll see. So I'm gonna do some thinking, but I've got my clay and I think I'm just gonna start playing around and see what I can do. Okay, so I think I have an idea of what I'm gonna do. Mind you, it might be kind of tedious, but the nice part about Sculpey Clay is that it does retain details fairly well. I'm actually going to just do the toe part with the pad and a claw, and then I'm going to have basically a hole in each of the toes and stick it on a piece of wire. So I'm going to clip these so that it's like four toes coming off of each paw because then this is kind of a mashup of like an art doll and needle felting and uh, yeah. So I've drawn my inspiration from three different artists and I'm just kind of mixing techniques now. But I want posable feet and since it's mostly gonna be covered in hair, the only thing that's really gonna be visible is the claws and the pads anyway. So I'll make the individual toes and then this separate pad which I'll glue on later. So that's my plan. We'll see how it goes. All the pieces are done, so now we have to put it in the oven. Uh, while that's baking, we can kind of adjust the feet on how we're going to attach them all. I did put some holes in these, but I may have to re-drill them if they shrink in the oven a little bit. So while that's baking, I'm going to fix this. Luckily, I did a double a double wire on all the limbs, so I think I can just split this and then splice in a V of extra wire, and then I should have the four individual toes. actually stand now. That's awesome. Okay, we got all of the little claws. So some of them are bigger than others, which is okay because the two middle ones are bigger. So I'm just gonna separate them out and kind of plan out where to put them all and I'll clip these wires accordingly and glue them on. Okay, and then before I glue each one on, I like to just kind of ever so slightly pinch just to create a little bit of texture on each wire so that it grabs a little bit better on the glue. All right, that's all of the 
toes and claws glued on and then eventually when I get all of the fabric on that will be on the bottom so then he'll have flexible toes underneath the the furry part so at this point I kind of need to call it quits because I need the glue to dry and then we can start doing the next section which honestly falls more into needle felting than anything else. We're gonna go with needle felting because I've got some other ideas planned for it. Let me show you real quick. So since we have some feathers in the in the design in the works, all of this along the ridge line is going to be kind of feathers mixed in with some longer hair. The tail is some feathers. We might have some feathering in the chest and then of course the wings. I have this lovely little drawer where I have a collection, not a, that's a random eucalyptus leaf, but I've got a collection of feathers and I've got a bunch of these whoop, peacock feathers. Some fun stuff planned, but I think this is going to just have to be a part one of two because I'm already running into the end of my day and I need to get this all edited. And the armature itself is just kind of its own beast. So the armature is done and I'm pretty happy with how it is. I'm glad I took it apart. I'm glad I fixed the anatomy portion of it. I think it's gonna look a lot better in its final product. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button to see when part two comes out. And that's it for now. I'll see you later, peeps.